Have you ever wondered how you can cover the things that aren't otherwise covered in original Medicare? Sometimes that's called the donut hole. We're gonna take a deeper dunk on that next. I'm Archie Hoxton. And I'm Rob Hoxton. And this is Last Paycheck, weekly wisdom to help you retire and stay that way. Welcome back to Last Paycheck. I'm your host, certified financial planner, Rob Hoxton. My co-host, my business partner, and my son, Archie Hoxton, is not here today because he is a new dad. I'm a new grandfather. So uh, yay for us. Uh, But I am excited to say that, again, just like last week, we've got um, Scott Ashoff, who is uh, an an exec over at uh, Medicare Back Office. We've been working with Medicare back office for uh, you know quite a few years now, actually, and, and, and Scott and his team help us navigate the complexities of, ne- of Medicare and the various types of insurance coverages that retirees need, uh, and they do a great job, and we get lots of great feedback uh, from clients when they've, when they've talked to him. So we're really excited to have Scott here. Scott, welcome aboard. Glad to have you for another episode on navigating Medicare. Well, thanks again for having me, Rob. It's a pleasure to be here, and, and congratulations. It's always exciting to add another person to the family, right? Yes, it is, and especially when they're as cute as this one is, and I tell you. Anyway, so yeah, so getting right down to business. So we talked last week about you know base, the basics of Medicare, You know what the types of coverages are, essentially the A, B, Cs of Medicare, and Ds of uh, Medicare coverage. We talked a little bit about how the costs work. So we're going to pay some premium in retirement, most likely. Some of us will pay more than others based upon how much income we have. And that's a real opportunity for your financial planner to help you plan your income so that you don't inadvertently pay more in premium than you have to. But, um, you know, there are some things that are not covered uh, by Medicare. So today we want to really dig into um, some changes in the law that have happened. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about the various ways that you can cover the things that aren't uh, covered in uh, ori- the original Medicare. So I'm going to just open the floor to you, Scott, let you roll with that. Well, very good. So I am going to start with what's not covered by Medicare. So to start off is Part B of Medicare, which is the health insurance side, the medical insurance side of Medicare. It is set up like an 80-20 plan uh, when you think about health insurance. And what that means is the Medicare part will pay 80% of your cost expenses, but you, the client, you're responsible for 20% in the most in most cases. And so that is where these other plans come into play. And so we talked about the A, B, Cs, and Ds of Medicare, uh, but we did get to the point now of what's called Part C of Medicare, which is commonly referred to as Medicare Advantage plans. An Advantage plan is a way to help cover those out-of-pocket costs at other 20%. The other option is a Medicare supplement plan, which here's partly why Medicare can be confusing is Medicare supplement plans are also classified by letters. And so they're classified from plan A through N. And so again, where you start getting into Medicare and how it can be confusing is the parts of Medicare are A, B, C, and D. And then you have Medicare supplement plans that are, again, A through N. And so, again, you can see how easily that can be confused. Uh, but there are two separate things. The parts or the main plan is, is the base of Medicare. The Medicare supplement plans, A through N, is something you would have in addition to cover those out-of-pocket costs. A through N. You know, only the government could make things as complicated as Medicare supplement or Medicare Advantage. And, and so... Help us just kind of boil that down, and 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 then I'm gonna I'm gonna share a comment that I had. I was, uh, and I w- want you to touch on this as well. So, I was with uh, a client yesterday. I was really excited about this episode, and I was telling him um, that he should be tuning in to Last Paycheck, and uh, and so I showed him how to do that, and uh, and we were talking about the topic for today: Medicare, Medicare supplement, Medicare Advantage. And, and he said, you know, I think that Medicare Advantage is a terrible idea. I have a friend who has a friend who got cancer and Medicare Advantage wouldn't pay for the treatment and he died. So there are so many stories out there 
Uh, and uh, I'm sure that my client didn't have all the facts. Um, but, you know, there there's a lot of confusion, a lot of, and it's a worrisome thing because if, if you get sick and you don't have adequate coverage, it can really have a huge impact on your health and it can have an impact on your financial situation in a big way too. Yeah, so that's something that you really do want to be cautious of or make sure you go through the whole process when you're making that Medicare decision. Um, so something we spoke about last week or that we always try and help clients with is you know, whether you utilize us or anyone, try and get someone who's independent who can give you both sides. What I mean by that more specifically is there's the Medicare supplement route, those plans A through N that we talked about. Those are standardized plans. So the benefit is the same. If you select Plan G or Plan N, which are two of the more popular plans right now on the Medicare supplement side, the benefits are the same. Whatever carrier you go with, whatever state you're in, there is only just the, the difference of how much are you paying, depending on your zip code or county or state, and then the company you're with. You know, what kind of service do you provide? Some carriers, believe it or not, they've been doing this for 60, 70 years. They're much better at it. They'll pay those expenses right away. You won't have to worry about it. You won't get a bill or a late notice that, hey, your Medicare hasn't paid. That's part of what we walk clients through. So again, that's one direction is the Medicare supplement side. And again, those A through N plans. The other side is Medicare Advantage. So like you said in, in the story you have there is by going the Medicare Advantage route, the company you select, the plan you select, they actually overtake and become your entire Medicare plan. They cover all the benefits. And typically in most cases, the benefits you have is that the premium tends to be lower. Um, in a lot of states, there are even zero premium Medicare Advantage plans. So you have coverage and you have benefits, things that are covered, and you're not paying a monthly premium for that. The other side of that, though, just like in the gentleman you mentioned, is you have to be careful of what network, what benefits are covered. That insurance company, and unfortunately, in most cases, the negative cases do come up, they control if it's covered, if they're going to pay. Uh, that actually even happened to my mother-in-law where she fell and as she's in the hospital, her Advantage plan basically came to the hospital and said, okay, it's time for her to go. Well, she's 88 years old, broke some vertebrae in her neck. No one obviously thought she should have gone, especially the children. And so that's the thing you do have to be aware of, of how that plan works. And so I, I will say though, is that we, we help with both plans. And so um, like you said, is you get both sides. There are pros and cons to both of them, uh, but the Advantage plans do tend to have lower premiums. So it's easier for people, especially if they have a more fixed income in retirement to say, oh, this one's so much lower. I'm healthy now. You know, I'm not taking medications or only take this one. This covers it. My doctor is in network. That's the other big thing you have to look at is Advantage plans have networks and can be limited. Like HMOs or PPO type networks? Both of those, yes, Rob. And so that's the other thing you have to look at is you can say, oh, the doctor I see for an annual checkup or whatever, he's in network. But the next question does become is where do you live? What kind of doctors do you have that, like you mentioned uh, with your stories, if I'm diagnosed with cancer, heart attack, diabetes, the big ones that have a lot of expenses tied to them, are the doctors or specialists still in that network? And so you want to make caut be cautious of that be aware of that if you're going that direction. All right, the one last thing I'll cover, and it's the most obvious, is most Medicare Advantage plans are only by your state. So as soon as you cross state lines, if you see grandkids in a different state, if you, you know, um, vacation in Florida or wherever it might be, typically those plans don't cover you in those other states. And so again, that's another thing you have to be cautious of if it's if your situation is something where that won't cover you then. So if it doesn't cover you, are you, do you just have to pay more of the cost and you have some coverage or is it just no coverage? So typically Medicare, the A and B part will still come in. So again, you're still, if you want to say, generally speaking, 80% of the cost will come in and cover you no matter where you're at. But yes, when you think about 20% and I mean, again, we probably all heard stories, just like even the story you mentioned, it only takes a couple of days or a you know, day or two in ICU where you can talk thousands and thousands of dollars is the 20% you have to cover. And that's the part you'd have to be responsible for if you have that type of plan that doesn't cover you out of state. I, I read something in, in um, your book here. Uh, I just, I'll just hold this up for listener or for viewers. If you are listening and you can't see it, it's called Navigating Medicare. It's a, a pamphlet that I found 
uh, to be super useful. I read it this morning with a cup of coffee, um, and uh, it was super helpful. It got me, it got me prepared for our for our episode. I think this is would be something to read before you talk to any insurance agent if you're talking to an insurance agent. But one of the things that I wondered about is if you start with a Medicare Advantage plan because you're generally pretty healthy when you when you enroll at age 65. And then you develop health and health issues. Can you feasibly switch to a, a, a Medicare supplement plan down the road during one of the open enrollment periods? So that's a great question, Rob. And you know, to directly answer your question, in most cases, no. So that is the thing. Uh, just to kind of recap, is at 65 or whenever you first get onto Medicare, whenever that is, you have initial enrollment period. Uh, so the first time you're on Medicare. You can select any plan, quite honestly, no matter what your health is. You know, you can use the term, you can be on your deathbed and you can get any plan. After that initial window, though, or like you said more directly to your questions, if you select an Advantage plan and then years down the road, especially if you develop some health issues, you can no longer get to the Medicare supplement side. You do have to do what's called qualify. So you'll go through health questions. You know, have you had cancer, diabetes, heart attack, stroke? whatever it might be. And in most cases, that is what can limit or even eliminate that as an option to go that route or pay a lot more than if you decided to review it or go that route when you were still healthy. I am just going to use this as a part to, you know, we've got the annual enrollment period or what people call AEP coming up here October 15th. I think we mentioned in the first episode last week, but that is a great reason why we strongly recommend anyone on Medicare, every AEP, Review your plan, make sure it's still the best coverage and it still fits what you're looking for so that you're not surprised. Because like you said here and can kind of summarize this whole question is like any insurance, once you have the event, it's typically too late to choose. You can't change at that point then. Yeah. And I think this is exactly the reason why we wanted to do these two episodes on navigating Medicare and do it right now because- if you are close to retirement, you have a huge decision to make that will impact your life for 20, maybe 30 years. Some of us are living even longer in retirement than we lived in our working years. So this is a really big decision that you have to make. We want you to have, we want you to at least know that you need to bone up on it and make sure you understand what, what you're doing so that you make the best decision for you. And it's different for everyone, of course. Uh, Scott, what else should our listeners and viewers be thinking about now, aside from, you know, really digging deep in reviewing here while the open enrollment period is going on? Well, so there's probably just one more thing I'd say of why it's important to review your plan right now. Uh, there was an act passed last year called the Inflation Reduction Act. And part of that act are, are changes to the Part D or the prescription drug part of Medicare. Uh, they've gone into effect. A couple of them went into effect this year. More going into effect next year, and all the way through 2029. Um, the end result is that this the the this, the goal is to help clients save money on their prescription drugs. So in reality, it's a it's a great thing for what it's designed to do. The other side of that, though, is these drug plans. The insurance companies have to also cover those costs. So we're seeing changes. And probably the biggest one, and this goes into effect next year, so this is why it's important to review that plan now in October for next year's plan, there is a cap that the plans cannot increase their premiums by more than 6% starting next year. So we have had carriers specifically tell us we're going to raise our premiums quite a bit this year, more than normal, much more than 6%, because we need to get up to where we think our costs are going to be especially if we're capped at 6% going forward. And so the last thing you want is that you don't review it. You don't think about it. And then next year, when you get a prescription, now are you paying more in premium? Again, we're seeing double digits, like 50 to 70% return in some instances, but you're also paying more out of pocket every time you fill that prescription. So again, that it's very important to just stay on top of it and, and be proactive when it comes to reviewing those plans. Scott, I love donuts, but I'm going to say that donut holes aren't the greatest thing when we're talking about Medicare insurance. Can you explain a little bit? Absolutely. And you're absolutely right, Rob. So donut holes refers to Part D or the prescription drug part of Medicare. What it basically means is that your drug plan typically will cover 
a higher percentage of any prescriptions or drugs you're taking to a certain extent, certain level. But then when you hit the hole, you become responsible for a higher percentage, a higher part. And so your expenses can go up dramatically, especially for certain drugs, typically involving cancer or diabetes. And until you hit the other side of that hole, you pay that higher percentage until it goes down again. And and I think before our uh, episode, you were telling me that the Inflation Reduction Act had a positive impact on that to a degree, right? Correct. So I, off the top of my head, I don't remember, but I believe it's either 2025 or 2026, they're going to limit your out-of-pocket costs to $2,000. So anyone hitting the donut hole typically goes much above that. It, their out-of-pocket is much higher. But once that kicks in from the Inflation Reduction Act, it'll be limited to $2,000. Well, you heard it here. Uh, hold on to your wallets, folks, because it's going to get crazy. Uh, and and you know we're 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 running out of time. I hope that everybody has found this topic to be helpful. Uh, it's super important stuff. We're really, really happy, Scott, that you were able to join us. And um, we'll have Scott's contact information in the comments section. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see it scroll up on the screen. But I can't recommend enough this little pamphlet. Uh, you can reach out to Scott. I'm sure he'd be happy to send it to you. It's called Navigating Medicare. Uh, if you'd rather uh, reach out to me, you can do that through our website for the podcast. Um, send us an email. I'll drop one in the mail for you. Found it to be very helpful. It's no sales pitch here, just good information. So um, I hope this has been a good a good episode for you. And if it has been, please like it, share it with your friends and family, watch it again next week. And um, in the meantime, hope, uh, hope, hope life is good to you and we'll be back next week. You've been watching Last Paycheck, weekly wisdom to help you retire and stay that way. If you like this show, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Last Paycheck is available anywhere you get your podcasts.